when you receive the products, you get them in these type of boxes, one box per unit you get. In this case, it is the AC800M controller. The AC800M controller comes pre-mounted, so the CPU is mounted together with the base from the beginning, like this. Also in the package, you have one bag with a battery for memory backup of the controller. And a second package with a number of installation components and connectors, which I will come back to later. Now to mount the CPU, uh, you have a locking device that locks the CPU to the DIN rail. In this position, you can take it on and off the DIN rail. In the second position, you lock it to the DIN rail, but you can still slide it like this. And then the third position is to actually lock it directly to the DIN rail. The devices in the plastic bag is generally to terminate the different buses on the CPU and also to provide the connectors for the power supply. So the first item here is the KEX bus termination, which is mounted to the right here. Just mount it there and then fasten it with the screws. The second termination is the module bus termination, the IO bus termination. Mount on the right side, this. And then you also have the power connector. Which you mount like that. Also in that plastic bag you get end supports which you can mount when you have put all the different units together at each end of that row of units. The next step is then to add IO modules to this lineup. Uh, the first one is an S800L IO module type, the DI801. This is a monolithic type of I.O. which uh, you mount with the same type of locking devices as you did for the controller itself. So the only thing to do is to put it onto the DIN rail, like this. Use the second position to have it stably on the DIN rail, but still possible to slide. Then you have to remove the termination of the bus here so that you can connect the IO module with the controller. You just slide them together like that. And then you can lock the IO module on the DIN rail immediately. The next example I want to show is a compact type of termination unit. These are used together with the S800 IO when you have separate IO module and termination unit. In this case, it's, as I said, the compact type. The compact type is mainly used when you need to save the space on the DIN rail and also uh, have, have the terminals enough that, that you require on, the, on board on the termination unit. Here we have a different locking device. This is more a spring type of locking device, which you open and close like this. But otherwise the same, you just put it on there. You have it now fastened on the DIN rail like this, and then you can slide them together. And they hook together, and you get contact between them. The next example is the extended type or family of termination unit. The extended family are made horizontally like this and there you have 
more terminals on board. So in these cases you have all the terminals you need on board. But still they fit together mechanically. And with the same locking device like this, you can mount them on the Dean rail and slide them together and get the contact you need. So you see here three different basic types of IO module mounting. The L module, the compact and the extended type. We also have a fourth variant of the termination units. Uh, this variant is for uh, IO modules where you have intrinsic safe interfaces and uh, to achieve that uh, on a secure manner you have to have a specific power supply inlet into these IO modules which we have provided through the termination units. Otherwise the same mounting procedure, put it on, slide it together. In the package you will also get the power supply connector you need to this specific IO module or termination unit which you then mount up here. And finally we have to terminate the IO bus with this little device which we put up at the end of the IO bus like that. So now we have a terminated buses and we have all bases and uh, units mounted, except for the IO modules themselves, which we can do now. The first IO module here is DO810. This module I will put on the compact type of termination unit. What you have to do is to make sure that you have the ID correctly set on the termination unit. Uh, on the I module, they are fixed. So on this I module, you need to have a termination unit with the mounting key AA. So here we can see AA, that was already there. And then it fits together like this. To lock, mechanically lock the I module to the termination unit, you use the locking tab on the right of the IU unit. This is also an activation of the IU module electrically. In the same way you handle the next IU module, in this case it's an AI-810. This AI-810 is mounted on the extended type of termination unit and a uh, mounting key is AE, so I put in A here and E on the second key. Then it fits together and we lock it and activate the IO module like this. The last IO is then the one with intrinsic safe interfaces. Intrinsic safe, IO modules with intrinsic safe interfaces are the only ones that fit on this type of termination unit. Uh, there we also have a specific mechanical design on the mounting keys. And the mounting key identity is AD on this module. So A, D, like that. And then we can put it on. And the same locking tab handling as before. So now we have the lineup here of the controller and different examples of IO modules in place. The next step then is to power up this setup. To do that, of course, we need a power supply. The power supply we have here is the SD831. And that's power supply is for up to 3 amps of supply, 24 volt. Uh, also have a similar type of spring locking device 
which we can put and we can put it up here. So now we hold devices in place and then we can start connecting them and I will start with the powering it. 